So why do we need to fix Europe? Well, because it's broken. Welcome to the Fix Europe campus. How do you fix Europe? In this campus, we're not finding out what is the one solution that is going to fix Europe. What we're here to do, though, is to get the passion that is, that is necessary to go beyond a certain politics of melancholia and launch a, a season of mobilization in Europe to fix it. This campus is part of a longer process which started four years ago with citizens' consultations throughout the continent. From this process we collected hundreds of political proposals, many of which are gathered in the Citizens' Manifesto. We have gathered activists from all corners of Europe in a three-day campus where we are learning, reflecting and strategizing and most importantly, defining the political priorities for the years ahead. We invited a very diverse mix of trainers and speakers who prepared sessions, workshops and debates so that we can come together and define our common goals, balance our ideas and uh, understand the methods to fix Europe. In one of the workshops yesterday, you use uh, somewhere in, in, in your book the expression democracy is being colonized. Politics is basically a model based on um, the printing press. It's a 500 year old model, the way we do government and politics. I think my idea of what leadership means was very different. Um, or maybe a little bit uh, uh, old-fashioned, uh, let's call it like that. And so we explored mostly the difference between authority and leadership in this first part and what's so different uh, about it and mostly why uh, leadership is not a thing that we have to leave to some mighty powerful people, but why leadership is something everybody can do um, and why it's so different from some authority function of the bosses, of the presidents, of the chancellors in our countries. And yeah. the point is that we don't need to talk, we need to act to do. Yeah. And uh, I would love to go more in this direction. Yeah, it's true, we do talk much, we don't do much, but I don't think I'm like that. I believe I do more than I talk. So. Yeah. Individual activists uh, should do only legal things. And again, here's the yes, over there is the no. I want to say something because I think we've been a bit ethnocentric on answering this question. Yes. Yes. Uh, I think there are many people in the world that take a lot of risk on doing campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's like even the reason that's why I'm here, away, like in Ukraine and uh, in everywhere in the world, actually, and uh, fighting for homosexual rights in uh, some true. countries. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's a bit too difficult to say that uh, these people don't take enough. Wow, risks. wow, you guys are amazing. Everyone is, of course, worried about surveillance at the moment, um, and we try to break uh, break people's fear down a little bit and look at what are the real threats. Um, that um, the participants were facing. We used kind of fictional characters, um, kind of activist types, um, and we tried to do a kind of threat assessment uh, on, those, on those types and looked at what kinds of behavior they could change and what kind of maybe tools they could start using to increase their security and privacy. The democratic systems we've got don't represent the way people are, they don't represent the way we think, they don't represent the way we act, and we talk a lot about democratic drift and disengagement. We're not disengaged, we're massively engaged, we're just not engaged in the formal process of democracy and politics, because it doesn't look like us anymore. So that's why we've got to create change. It's easy for us to stand up and complain, but actually when we do, no one listens. 
So how do we work with people who are in a position of power so that they can create the change as well? How do we lead change from both sides? I'd like to be playful and twist that question around and ask why not to fix Europe. Um, European society is very democratic. Um, in, by global standards, it's a, a very tolerant and inclusive society. But like any other society, it has a number of problems, issues and situations that need to be um, remedied. Um, I think that the democratic spirit also um, should lead us to think about what can we optimize about our democratic societies? How can we make them better? How can we make them more inclusive? Because if we've reached a, a certain standpoint from which um, other countries might look at European society um, with the aspirations of becoming something similar to them, there should be no real limitations to what we can become in the future. For Europe to keep existing and for Europe to keep evolving, there is work to do and we can't leave this to the people in Brussels because they're overwhelmed by the, by the challenges um, of Europe today. Um, because uh, further European integration in times of globalization, of further increasing complexity around the world requires us on the ground at the grassroots. Um, to think how to better connect, how to better align our ideas of the future. I would actually relate back to the workshop. I think it'd be very important for Europe to develop a common idea of, of European news and European information sharing that is that's currently lacking. So how do we fix it? How do we fix Europe? Well, it's really hard, but we have to start somewhere. So let's start by getting people who understand the problem to spread the word and talk about how we make decision making more engaged, uh, more deliberative. How do we make policy more open? How do we open up the, the process of government and politics? How can we change it so it's not about power and incumbency or using power over, but using power with? So instead of controlling, we let go and share. And instead of trying to always channel the answer to the one that we want, let's let other people decide and see if we can use the, the power of crowds and the power of individuals to come up with new ideas that we never even thought of. We are all confronted with some serious questions and that we are uh, constantly lacking capacity to tackle. So it's good to have a support of other people that are all across Europe to work with them and to exchange uh, with others. I try to connect the, the sessions and workshops that are happening here to the problems that we have back at home. I think it's really important to start taking, uh, taking citizens serious and then I don't only mean institutional democracy processes but actually think about how we can involve um, citizens in the ideas that exist because I think there's uh, many many very interesting initiatives at a local level but they just never get translated to kind of a transnational or European level which means that you have in, in local circumstances you have people doing the same thing but they just never meet each other and um, I think a lot could be gained if we can build kind of a European network much more and have this integrated so local initiatives can get to know each other and things can actually be translated and, and developed in a more transnational um, um, way. Uh, it's fundamental that civil society be not only active but proactive and it deal with its um, issues and complications and problems by suggesting proposals, by organizing at the local, um, the national and the European level and in tightly knit communities of friends, people that are like-minded and that share values and ideals and um, through very concrete actions with our local, national and European governments, um, but also with um, creative proposals of how things can be done differently, not only um, through European and national institutions, but also by communities themselves and for the communities themselves. If I learned something out of this session, was to take uh, our utopian ideas very seriously in a very funny way at the same time and to treat them as if they are really pragmatic, really feasible and introduce this utopian or dystopian ideas to the public as if they're happening, as if they are existing right here, right now. I think we can fix Europe by better connecting with one another, by better aligning our visions for why we need Europe, why uh, we want to keep Europe, 
because I've been studying the European Union, this sort of thing helps me to understand what a common citizen feels like, if you feel like a European citizen or not. And um, it helps me to understand that I'm not alone in this world, and there are people who think like me. Um, and it's always great to keep in contact with these people, even after the campus or even in 10 years from now, we'll actually get to see where we, where we are.